Welcome everyone to the Hirewell Recruiting Insights Podcast. I'm your host, James Hornick, partner at Hirewell. Uh, joining me is an HR professional hailing from the great state of Texas, where he is a perennially disappointed Dallas Cowboys fan, Adam Rosenfield. Hey, James. How's it going? I'm, I'm doing just, great. <laughs> I, you know, for the amount of time that like we've been connected on LinkedIn and uh, talked and chatted, I, I think this is a good sort of culmination of it all. Yeah, I think that, and it actually kind of dovetails into what we want to talk about too. So, um, and I was glad someone this morning finally uh, noticed the, the the fact that I made some promo images for this and had kind of the jokes we had in our headline, which is actually part of the point of what we want to talk about a little bit today um, in terms of humanizing yourself a little bit on LinkedIn and whatnot. So, um, and I think laying this up too is that we had, you and I both had um, not, not at all conflicting, but kind of two different takes on things that we think are important in terms of kind of personal branding as it relates to job search. So like, um, I want you to kind of lead off the discussion about the humanizing piece, but then I want to talk more about kind of like the, the targeting and segmentation and kind of strategy behind kind of building things as it relates to job search. Um, before, before we even get this going, why don't you introduce yourself? Like, just tell everyone about yourself, what your situation is, what your expertise is. Like, I know you really well, but a lot of people may have not, uh, might not be familiar. So let's start. Yeah. So my name's Adam Rosenfield. Uh, I am hailing from Austin, Texas, uh, nat <clears throat> native Texan, uh, and anything, everything Texas. Uh, so what, what I do, I'm in the, uh, human resources and recruiting space. Started out similar to James uh, in the agency world, uh, and then most recently was doing both HR and recruiting at a uh, at a real estate investment at a real estate investment firm. So, uh, li little little different things I do. Um, I do. I'm really involved in the HR community, both in Austin uh, and. Uh, nationwide, just trying to do everything from diversity and inclusion to talent acquisition to, uh, you know, my my goal, and we talk about personal branding, uh, I subscribe to the uh, Larry David quote um, that he said in Curb Your Enthusiasm, he said, I'm trying to elevate small talk to medium talk. And, um, you know, obviously, this, it, that quote in this context is a little bit different than the way he said it in that particular episode. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it, it, does, it does ring pretty true. So, um, yeah, so I was actually one of the victims of COVID-19 about a month ago. Uh, but, you know, I have, I have navigated the world before and, you know, I have used LinkedIn and other, other methods to uh, give myself a voice you know, even as a younger HR professional. Um, and, you know, I wanted to, I, I think when you and I talked, you know, we wanted to help sort of share that because we both have a similar way of going about our personal brand, but also in two different, coming from two different spheres. Uh, so that's, that's why I'm here. And yeah, it's, it's good to be here. And that's, that's, that's let's start it off. Let's do it. So um, a couple of things I want to do to kind of lay this up. So um, I wanted to talk about like, anytime you see, anytime you talk about personal brand, I feel like people just get like, Oh God, it's another Gary V talk. They're going to talk yeah. about why you should post a ton of LinkedIn and what their secrets are when they're just doing what everybody else is. But really it's not about that. And we're going to kind of dig a little bit deeper into it. And I specifically want to talk about it in relates to kind of job seekers, because I strongly believe that, um, it's an opportunity for people to, to get real opportunities, real jobs, get in the door places without having to go through the entire application process. And um, I guess that one thing that I, I can't stress enough is that you get jobs from having one-to-one -one engagement with real people. That's always yeah. what it comes down to. Now, in the traditional process of applying to jobs, that happens in the interview process. Like anytime you've gotten a job or anytime someone's, or you've hired someone, it always came down to at some point in time, like during that interview process, someone, you liked someone, they liked you, you had genuine engagement, you had that good feeling about it. And that's ultimately what put you over the top versus the next person or whatever else. But it doesn't have to happen there. It can happen at any other point. Like it's, it's just, it comes down to finding ways to kind of, um, have that kind of genuine one-on-one -on -one engagement with people, um, you know, which, which we'll talk a little bit more too, but you know, people, anyone who's, anyone who's been in a hiring position can probably relate to this where, 
um, you love it when you just happen to know somebody who can do the, what you need before you have to go through the whole rigmarole of like the formal processes and creating job descriptions, which is a lot of how a lot of people get jobs. So how can you yeah. kind of put yourself in a position where people know you early on in the process before it even gets to that like more formalized point? Um, the other thing too about like personal brand is it is not synonymous with social media. So social media is what can allow you to really put your personal brand on steroids and really allow you to become even like really escalate things, especially when you can't leave your house, you know, at times like this, it's hard to network right now in a more traditional, like physical sense, but personal brand is really just, it's you, what your reputation is and how well known that reputation is. And that's, that's as simple as that. So it's like, what do people know of you? What do they think about you? What's their impression of you? Then how many people know about you and have that impression? And because I, I can, if, if you're not a person, if you're watching this and you're not a person who's traditionally been like a big social media type, you're not really into it. You've not like spent a lot of time online and you're not really comfortable with it. It's, it's, I kind of relate it to, um, to some, to some real world people, you know, on a positive side. Now I'll even throw out, there's a guy in my office. I'll, I'll talk about him. He's not going to care. Um, but there's a guy in my office, Mike Ehlers. He is the most outgoing um, one of the nicest, one of the most like, um, when you meet this guy, you will never forget him because he's has such a level of energy where he's just like a unique character. He's like someone, someone you'd see on a Larry David show. Like he's just, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's positive. Um, he's well known. Well, like he's a hustle, but he's just like, when I say he's like, he's, he has more energy than anyone I've ever met in my entire life. And the thing is, he's not really like, he's, he's on LinkedIn. He posts about the jobs he's on, but really people know about him because of like his in-person, like you meet him once you remember, you know? And he's a person who's, he's, so he's not like a, a big online person like we are, but he has a very strong personal brand, especially around the Chicago HR community. People just kind of know him. And then like on the flip side, there's people who have maybe a negative personal brand, people who, who aren't online. Like everyone's worked with someone like that, right? And one who's someone who's kind of just like a negative person that you just kind of, you, you don't really want to be around. And um, you can fill in the blanks. I'm not going <laughs> to say anything. I'm not going to out anyone there in particular. Yeah. But, um, but it's like, Personal brand is like, my point of this is saying personal brand is not a uniquely online thing. It is a real world thing. Um, but when you take it to the level of what you can do on LinkedIn, you can either um, turbocharge that by, you know, making, the, um, making that part of your personality and that part of kind of your knowledge base more well known to others. Um, and that's why I think it's important, especially now, because a lot of people are in a situation where they need help with their job search and making their knowledge base and their reputation more well known as well as getting that out to more people can definitely turn around and having more job opportunities. So that was a long winded intro. Um, would you <laughs> like to kick this off? Cause you, cause when you, you and I were first started talking, you were like really talking about humanizing yourself on LinkedIn. And I'm just like, when you first said, it, I was like, what is he, I don't even know what he means by that. So um, why don't you lay this up for everyone? When you talk about kind of humanizing yourself more on LinkedIn, what do you mean exactly? Yeah. So, and, and here's the thing. I think with, with social media, uh, there's always these memes that go around that's like social media versus reality. And in, on some platforms and in some, in some aspects, like that's 100% true. I mean, I think, you know, we're trained, especially those who are online, like we're especially trained to see past the BS and be like, wait, like this person is posting this stuff, but it seems very fake. So, you know, you, you talk about that funnel, you talk about that personal brand. Um, when, I say, when I say humanize, uh, I, I say, you know, make, make, make it like a, your, your brand or what you say on LinkedIn is like a conversation. And who you are, it's, 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 it's like a conversation. I mean, there, LinkedIn has so many different, things like groups or awards or certifications or hobbies or, you know, and the whole about me section. Uh, and the idea is you want somebody to get to know you, you know, you're more than just a KPI. So when, when I say humanizing, you know, it's putting your hobbies, it's what do you want people to remember you by? Um, the, the one thing on our, on our marketing, uh, on our little marketing thing that we sent out to people, you know, you are the number three sarcastic commenter on LinkedIn, and I am a perennially disappointed Dallas Cowboys fan. So, and what I've seen is that, you know, as I've started posting, connecting more, talking, having more conversations, 
a lot of my conversations don't start with HR. They don't start with, hey, let's talk about you know, DNI. Let's talk about recruiting. Let's talk about talent management. It's, hey, just like you, you know, I am from X, but you know, I am a disappointed Cowboys fan. Maybe they'll win it this year. Maybe not. And like, that's, how, that's how the conversation goes. So immediately, I'm not just somebody who posts on LinkedIn. I have a shared experience with them. Um, and, and I think that's what, that's what I mean when I say humanizing yourself, because I am more, we are more than just job titles. You know, we have hobbies, we have families, we have, pers- we have personal, uh, we have per- personal beliefs and, you know, that, that is our way. I like, there may be somebody who connects with me in England or South Africa or Philadelphia and that might be the one thing that connects to them. And then we have a much easier time having that conversation and opening that funnel to lead to an opportunity, um, whatever that opportunity might be. I think that um, it was interesting when you mentioned that last week to me, because I, I just I made that change in my profile in the last like seven days or so. Um, the number three sarcastic yeah. <laughs> comment from LinkedIn. Because I was because I was trying to figure out well, what's my thing. You have a pretty good thing with the Dallas Cowboys thing. I've gotten more comments on that than anything else in the last week. It's been it's crazy how much. And I realized here's here's kind of what happens is that um, LinkedIn went from a lot of the social aspects of LinkedIn have only really existed for the past few years. Like LinkedIn's been around since early mid two thousands, but for the longest time it was very much just an employee directory. It was like an online yeah. resume. Um, so people have treated it like that, you know, whereas it has the capacity and it's slowly, I think it's only really picked this up in the past few years to truly be social media where people can actually engage with each other in a way that's not just shoot me a resume. Like there's still tons of very boring, generic, direct outreach being done every day. And it drives me absolutely crazy. Yeah. But the amount of people who are building relationships like you and I, like how, how, how else would we have met, you know, if it weren't for less like jokes we make on each other's LinkedIn posts and stuff like that. But it's still relevant towards, um, uh, to, I guess, towards business and job seeking is that like, I think we're at a, we're at a place in our, our culture and our climate where everyone's over, there's that perception in your head that like business communication is supposed to be stuffy and serious, but nobody actually enjoys that. Nobody actually wants no. that. Everyone wants to work in an environment that's more I don't want to say fun, but more just normal and human, as you've said, you know, and I think taking that kind of approach on LinkedIn makes you more memorable. Um, the, the way that you laid up to me last week is you, you gave me an example. I don't know if you want to go through examples of people that you, yeah, no, your profiles, I, I, I definitely, the first one, I definitely do. Yeah. Yeah. The, so mention Madison's cause that's, that's what got me thinking. Cause I have a good way to kind of tie this in. Yeah. No, so her and I listed a few other people as well and, and we can go, we can go through a few, but it's, you know, the, these people, especially her, um, she posts things that are from the heart and that are meant to have conversation. And then you see in the comments, you know, she is unflailingly herself. Yeah. And this is Madison Butler for anyone who's not familiar. So you can check her out on LinkedIn. Well, and her brand is the blue haired recruiter. And, and this, yeah, and this is ahead. what got me kind of right off the top. Cause I'm like, names are very generic, no matter what your name is. Like yeah. there's a million Jameses in the world. There's a million Adams in the world. People may know you, but they know a million other Adams. And if they're not like someone like, um, it's easy. Like if someone dropped your name or someone else's name, and in this case, like last week when we were talking about this, it was Madison's name. You dropped her name, like mentioning, Hey, have you seen her profile? And it took me three seconds, right? Like I had to think, no, but as soon as you say blue haired recruiter, it's like, I know exactly who she is without even thinking, you know what I mean? And it's a, it's the storytelling aspect of like a title. Like th- there might be a lot of Adams in the world. And if someone says Adam Rosenfield, it, they'll probably, if they, if they're familiar with you, it, it may take them a few minutes, but yeah. the Cowboys guy, as soon as like this, someone mentions that, you know what I mean? It, it's, it's like an immediate recognition whenever there is more of a story besides just someone's name, when you can kind of associate with them. That's well, and, I, and I, I think, I think that's the thing too, is we're getting to be, maybe back or we're getting more to be a storytelling culture. And I think LinkedIn is slowly becoming a storytelling platform. And, you know, when we talk about humanizing it, it's talking about telling your story. So like she does a really good job of telling her story and her story resonates with a lot of people. Another Mm -hmm. guy who's doing it like very similarly, who he's working on his brand is like Jared Carroll. 
Um, he talks about similar things, uh, but from a different perspective. But it's it's about storytelling, and you know, people don't connect to, hey, I'm hiring for this role. People mm -hmm. connect to, let me talk about this lived or shared experience, and you know, maybe it relates to work. Um, you know, maybe it's you know, people want to post it on LinkedIn because there are professionals who don't want to post but resonate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that's that's what it means when we talk about humanizing and, and personal brand. And I mean, especially especially right now, you know, everybody's online right now. And it's not like anybody is well, people are outside sometimes, but um, you know, it's people are constantly looking to connect and you have to have that hook or that story. Um, you know, you, you've got to, you've got to be more than just, Hey, I'm a recruiter or Hey, I'm in HR or I'm in marketing or engineering. It's, this is my story. Yeah, I agree. I think, um, I think one of the mistakes that a lot of people, because this is legacy LinkedIn, you know, what I'm kind of describing is there's a lot of people who use LinkedIn strictly as like a mouthpiece for their company. They're just yeah. resharing corporate marketing stuff that no one cares about you know it's like it's it's one of the like people have just because it's um i think people are tuned in like people just kind of ignore any sort of like corporate marketing and then if the entirety of your online presence is just echoing your corporate marketing it it's i don't know if it's a disservice to yourself but it's a missed opportunity um to build actual expertise um, or build actual street cred by talking more in depthly about why these things are important versus just kind of the only thing you do is kind of share, you know, an event you have going on or marketing collateral or something else like that. No, absolutely. I think so many people miss an opportunity when, when they're just posting, yeah, comp company collateral because there are so many good conversations happening um, that that if you're just focused on on that one thing, you're not even humanizing your company. Like I think... I think now, especially during COVID, you see, you see companies being humanized uh, mm -hmm. just in the, in, the work, in the work they do, whether, you know, helping to serve others or even also humanized in a negative way. So, you know, I, I just think, you know, pe people, I mean, you, you are having, you can have these water cooler conversations online you know much much more easily than, than you could even even before covid do you have any because you're currently going you're currently in a job search um yep. do you have any good examples of this like anything you can share or anything that comes to, to comes to mind i, I want to make things a little more tangible for people and um i want to make sure we kind of finish this topic off too i do want to jump into um kind of some ideas i have in terms of like building and engaging with kind of target areas but maybe any stories you've had or any successes you've had so far in terms of like kind of engaging with people yeah, I mean, there there have been some where, I mean, it, it's, it starts with this jersey. Um, I know I actually just got one comment that said, like, that's a really disgusting jersey you're wearing. But, um, uh, you, you know, it, it's, it starts with this sometimes, and it, it starts with this, and then it just goes into conversation. And I've had collaborations that I've been doing uh, that, have, that have started with this, or uh, things that I have posted that just strike that strike conversation and that i've actually gotten i think one or two one or two interviews off of uh, but yeah. then also got on a hiring manager's radar uh because of it and um i mean those aren't like the most the most tangible examples uh but it's it's just i think as a job seeker on linkedin i think sometimes we can res i can we can resort to like desperation yeah and I think sometimes that's what happens. And I know recruiters are definitely burnt out by it. Um, but what I've done is sometimes I'll just go on people's profiles and say, look, like that's your hobby. And I'll just start talking about their hobby and mm -hmm. that, 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 that gets you in. And I mean, that's, and that's what I talk about when I say humanizing your, your, your LinkedIn, because they are more than just the HR director, you know, they volunteer at Austin Pets Alive or, you know, their favorite breed of dog is, you know, schnauzer or something like that. And that's when I talk about when it's like just simple, it's simple conversations and, you know, under, understanding your personal brand and their personal brand. Does that make sense? Yeah, it totally makes sense. 
Um, let me make it, let me, let's take it, let's kind of move on a little bit to the next area because yeah. I wanted to, I think this will make it a little more, um, a little more tactical in terms of how people can execute. Um, the thing about LinkedIn, there, there's two ways, I think, of two effective ways of getting around the whole apply for a job interview process. Um, one of them, and they're both effective. One of them isn't what I really want to focus on today. And that's just mm -hmm. frankly doing direct outreach to hire managers just like yeah. going around like there's no reason not to i talk about this a lot in terms of like don't ask for a job ask for advice you know what i mean when you're talking like if you're having trouble with your job search or if you're trying to get pivot a new area a good way of going about it is finding someone who's in that area and asking them how they got there and if they could advise you but anyways that's a different topic for another time um for this i i think because this is more branding um this technique um i think that People need to remember that branding is not always an immediate thing. It's more of a long-term play, which I know isn't always what you want to hear when you're talking about a job search, which is immediate, but it's a long-term play that can have a lasting kind of impact on your reputation. So it's not something that you just start doing today and it's going to pay off tomorrow. It can pay off tomorrow. It can pay off this month, but it can also pay off kind of perpetually in the future, which is kind of really a value of kind of building out kind of your reputation and kind of getting involved in this type of stuff. But if you look at the whole... Um, if you look at LinkedIn and the entire population of a whole, and let me make this more specific because I guess the digital realm is probably where I'm the most familiar. If you're a digital marketing manager and you're based in Chicago, which is where I'm based, the ideal situation is that you want people within the digital marketing community, especially hiring managers, to be familiar with you. That way, when you apply for a job, if you do apply, or if you just reach out to them, or um, if for any other reason they hear your name, they're already familiar with you, right? Um, you're kind of a known commodity. It's also easier to have one-to-one -one conversations. You want to, the types of people that you want to interact with, and you want to interact with people kind of, if you're a digital marketer, that are well-known in digital marketing circles anywhere really, right? There's certain people that just have big followings. Um, you want to interact with hiring managers specifically at companies you're interested in. So if you have, you know, 10, 20, 30 companies that are in Chicago land in this example, and you know, and you're looking at marketing, you know, you want to see who are the CMOs and VPs and people who are pretty high in that in those organizations that are involved in LinkedIn. Um, you want to interact with them. And you also want to interact with peer groups, the way the algorithms work, like the, all these people are kind of loosely related. And the more you can start interacting with them on different levels, you know, the more often your name is going to pop up, the more often, yeah. more often people are going to start interacting with you. It's, it's all kind of one circle. So what I would do, there's the, like I said, there's the direct, there's the very direct method of kind of connecting with people and trying to engage with them. And for, I, there are ways I think are effective of doing that. But I think in terms of strictly kind of brand building and finding getting a lay of the land, becoming, making sure people are more familiar with you, following everybody you can find that falls in one of those three categories. So people who are just marketing leaders anywhere, people who are marketing leaders at target companies you're interested in, in your local area, um, and people who are kind of within your peer group. So this doesn't have to be marketing. This can also be sales. This can also be HR. This can be whatever area you're in. But those three things, so people who are well-known, people who are local and in hiring manager areas and people who are peers and highly active on LinkedIn. Um, making a point to um, engage with their posts and their content. So obviously this, this is works best people who actually are active on LinkedIn. Yeah. But if you can, so I actually do this um, myself um, just for, for a point of kind of how I get involved. I follow everybody that I find interesting and then everyone that I, and then I also make lists of all their URLs. So if you go to like their profile and then click through their activity, you can actually pull, make, make a list of URLs. Um, and so what I do, I, go I, ahead. I want to, I want to interrupt real quick because sure. I think people don't make use of the URL as well. And I think that's another great area to put your personal, to put your personal brand. Um, you know, my, mine obviously is linkedin.com slash Adam Rosenfield, or it's like Adam J. Rosenfield, I think what it is. But, um, I think that's a great way uh to when we talk about personal brand and branding every every part of who you are uh you know if it's a saying or if it's how people know you um you know if it's like linkedin.com slash sarcastic james like it's a it, it's it's another it's another way for people to know exactly who you are so sorry i'll i'll, I'll let yeah. you continue no worries i hate it when i talk too much without taking a break <laughs> never know when i'm losing people anyway um so the point is follow people in those three categories that I mentioned, but also 
take down all their URLs of their activity section. And so what I'll do is when I just, you know, I'll, a few minutes a day here and there on LinkedIn, when I see people like have something to say, or they're, they're talking about having a discussion, interact with them, you know, ask questions, give them your take on things, make a point to comment on whatever your take is on whatever topics being discussed. Um, you'll be surprised just by doing that. You will start having people recognize you, follow you, you know, whatnot. Then the second thing I do is, um, if I was in active job search mode, I would do this more than I do currently, but several times a day I will take, I have a list right now of like 40 URLs of people on LinkedIn, their activity section directly copy and paste that there is a Chrome application called tab snap. Um, tab snap allows you to open up like a list of URLs with one click all in separate tabs. And then I just go through and see, okay, who's commented in the last hour, two hours, three hours. And if I have something to say, if I have a insight or opinion on whatever topics being discussed, I always make sure to kind of chime in with that. So you'll start to notice now it's not just about talking and expressing yourself and whatnot, but by virtue of taking all this activity, you will start popping up in the feeds of the people who interact with you more often. Um, or people who interact with that post more often. So if Adam posts something and I comment on it, the other people who commented on that post are going to start seeing my stuff more often as well, especially if they liked it or whatever else, if they had any kind of interaction with it. So that's the methodology behind this is it's not just commenting to talk and get yourself out there, but the algorithm is smart enough to know that people who are interacting with the same people and people who are following the same circles and having the same conversations will start seeing each other's interact interactions and whatnot more often, at which point you start building like your own microcosm where you've got people in those pre-select groups like I mentioned. So people who are hiring managers in your area and people who are kind of highly involved with stuff in your area are gonna start seeing you and what you're talking about more often which is the entire goal. So that's how you can pretty quickly go from becoming someone who um, may not be very vocal or may not be very active or may not have a lot of followers to someone who is fairly well known kind of within your circles that you determined because these are people who you decided to seek out and have regular interaction with. And you can do all this without actually being first connected to anybody. I mean, I think, yeah, I think that's the beauty of LinkedIn too. Yeah, you don't have to connect, you don't have to actually connect with somebody because there are people who, yeah, I mean, there's second and third connections. You, you can also just even follow them, but you can just easily comment and yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll be on their radar without even connecting with them. Yeah. And it, then eventually you do, you know, like that's typically yeah. how I, I do things is like, I think you and I probably interacted with each other a bunch of times until before we finally connected, you know, and yeah. I think a lot of people I know are like that. Like you start seeing the same names and all of a sudden it's, oh, I actually, you feel like, you know, this person because you've been having like genuine kind of interactions and comments sections and somewhere. And then next thing you know, like that's how you can dovetail things into interviews. That's how you can like start having more warm when you have a direct message thread with somebody at that point in time, once you've had some other online chats with them, it's not weird. It's not awkward. It's not like too forward. It's, you know, you already kind of know each other, in which case like asking questions like, Hey, here's my situation. I'm looking for a role. You know, here's my situation. Um, I'm trying to make a job change or a career change or something like that. It goes from being a very cold, you know, kind of, you know, intro you might not be very comfortable with to something that's actually very warm. So. Well, and, and, and that's, and that's how th that's some of the ways I found success too, because we're not, the, the first thing is we're not talking about, Hey, I got, you know, Hey, I got laid off or Hey, like this is, this is my job situation. It's, we go, we go from that, which usually takes 10 to 15 minutes to, to warm up to the middle section where it's like, okay, what are your thoughts on HR and recruiting and it's like, you know, I know you posted these couple these couple of things a while back and this is what I said and then it's actually a meaning meaningful conversation that you're having with hiring managers and you're going from Okay, what are your qualifications to okay? How can we create opportunities for you in our organization? And I think that you know, that's really where that personal brand and that humanization comes in like when people when I post people know how I think about different industries and the conversation shifts from, okay, this is a job to, okay, how do we, how do we go structure the organization? What are your thoughts on this and this and this? And it's probably the same, the same with you and candidates in general. It's, you know, people know your thoughts on the industry. And so it goes from, this is my situation to, okay, how can we, how can we make something happen? hundred percent. As you were mentioning that, I was thinking also, 
the amount of times that, um, cause I have a lot of people contact me on LinkedIn, you know, and I never know. Um, I, I talk to pretty much everyone. Um, but I always feel better about like, people who have interacted with me ask me a question like I don't even like hesitate like yeah let's jump on a call let's do it yeah. versus people who hit me out of the blue without having ever interacted with me before I'm just always like are you trying to sell me something I guess I'll take the call you know what I mean it's just more of a I think that um, if you can the more interaction you can have with people and again these are people you're kind of targeting because you know they're experts in your area like they're infinitely more likely to to want to like have that conversation with you. And it, it'd be, I, I can't envision many scenarios where you, once you have genuine engagement frequently that people aren't going to like be excited to talk with you. So, so I've got a question for you because sure. you know, the, it's, it's something that I get all the time. It's, Hey, I'm, I'm too afraid to comment on LinkedIn. I'm too afraid to post, you know, except, except if it's positive. Um, you know, how do I, like it's common sense what they're talking about, but how do I, how do I talk about it? So, you know, from, from the mind of a, of a recruiter and a guy who does really well on LinkedIn, I want to hear, you know, the one thing you and I talk about is don't take to common sense for granted. So how does somebody who might be a little bit afraid to post on, to, to post on LinkedIn and honestly, I'll take the social media in general. Uh, how do we encourage that person and, and what does it look like? Uh, for in order for them to build that build that personal brand using the common sense that we talk about in the workspace I think there I mean there's a couple things to unpack there that go into that so one I've seen a lot of people who are active on other social media that are afraid to use LinkedIn and that gets really common for some reason um, I, I, I can't always I, I'll be honest I can't really wrap my head around it because like what you the conversations you have on LinkedIn can actually do something that benefits you and your career and your life yeah. whereas like most conversations you have on Facebook like are kind of meaningless you know yeah and but I, humor, yeah yeah but I so I would I, I guess my piece of advice is um maybe so let me, let me tie this back to I, I think the people who aren't comfortable commenting on LinkedIn or talking because they're afraid that um, their ideas aren't any good or that maybe they're not, you know what I mean? They're just, they're afraid of being judged or they're afraid of putting themselves out there because it's, um, you know, some people it's the imposter syndrome. They don't want to be exposed or, you know what I mean? I think that how to differentiate between common sense and what you know, and it's actually kind of doves into like our third topic. Um, a lot of people know a lot more than they realize. A lot of most people have way more insights than um, they give themselves credit for. I, I anybody watching this, you're a wealth of knowledge in your area. You have a lot of thoughts in your head that a lot of people just don't either have. But most people think a lot of what they know isn't that interesting um, because they think it's um, because they think it's common sense, right? There's a, the reason why people think that is because I'm a recruiter. I talk to recruiters all day long. So recruiters who are in my office, recruiters who I interact with, they actually do know a lot of what I'm talking about. But anybody who's not a recruiter probably has no clue what I'm talking about half the time. And you can say this about any skill set. You can say this about marketing people. You can say this about sales people, technical people, people who aren't in your immediate circle, um, not just your skill area, but maybe even just your own company that has you know, people outside your, your circle have a different way of doing things. Um, here's how I typically differentiate. Um, anytime somebody, and this is definitely jumping into like how to kind of create content, Anytime somebody asks you a question, they didn't know that. That's something yeah. that's, that's specific to you. Chances are a lot of other people don't know that either. So whether this is a real life question, whether this is like you, you know, you're having a chat with somebody like in your office or someone outside your company or, you know, someone at a different level, maybe someone who's more junior or someone kind of in a slightly different area. But anytime you find yourself answering questions, that's great content, great things to talk about because that's inherently something that clearly not everybody knows. It's not common sense to everybody. So that's in fact, I'd say that's probably how 90% of the stuff that I talk about um, actually comes up is that I answered somebody's question one day. Like a lot of, you might see my videos on LinkedIn where I'm kind of like, I'm looking in this direction. Yeah, that's roughly it. And I'm yeah. seemingly having a conversation. It's because I actually am having a conversation with somebody. They asked me a question. I was taking a video of it like from the side and my explanation is something I thought was valuable for others, but don't have to be doing video, don't have to be doing anything kind of on that level. But um, if, you're, if you're in the comments section somewhere 
and you have a point that you thought was really good or people responded to, people seem to like it, or people ask you follow-up questions, that's something a lot of other people are going to want to know. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's, I think it's all just about, it's about conversations. Like everybody has an opinion on something and it's mm -hmm. all it is, is just getting your opinion out there. And if you get your opinion out there enough, sometimes the right people are going to see it. Um, by the way, we do have a couple of questions so right. on the, uh, on the zoom. So I guess the first one is, do you feel that it's worth paying for LinkedIn premium? And I think we can both answer, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll start with you. I'll start with you. Um, let me hide this. Um, LinkedIn. I'm not going to say I'm probably one of the worst people to ask. I have LinkedIn sales navigator. Um, I haven't looked at LinkedIn premium versus LinkedIn regular for quite some time. Um, what's the difference in LinkedIn? LinkedIn premium gives you more emails. Is that what it is? Or I mean, so I, I have, um, uh, I think I have LinkedIn recruiter and it gets you, it gets you like 80, it's like 80 emails in mails per month. And then it's increased search capacity. Um, cause that, you know, that's obviously the one thing as a job seeker is, you know, you're, you're trying to search, do every kind of Boolean search possible to find the right hiring managers and the right jobs. And I swear after like 40 searches, if you don't have premium, then it's not, it's not there. So, um, I mean, it's, I think the, it, it's, it's expensive. That's, that's, the, that's the issue. Yeah. Yeah, I think it comes down to I've like, well, well, let's talk about from a feature standpoint because I don't I don't know what the exact kind of the cost differential is. I think that in mails are a complete waste. So if um, I can't think of like we don't send in mails hardly anymore. Um, Why wow. I haven't sent an email in forever? It's just people market as spam. You just assume once you receive, you see like no one really uses them. When you do use them, it's, someone's always trying to sell you something like every yeah. single time. So like, I haven't sent an in-mail in years. Um, I think it's probably the deadest part of their entire platform. Um, just because it's all just, it's people are kind of, they show up differently in your mailbox. You can tell someone paid for it. It just like, it's a different user experience from the person who receives it that you just kind of mark it off as someone's trying to spam me for something. Um, but it's also so easy. I think that first connection messages, um, there's just more intelligent ways of using those, you know? And I think that, um, I, I guess I can kind of go on the other thing. What I would do instead of sending out in mails is, um, send someone a connection method that's asking them for, um, some advice or a quick favor, you know, and this is actually, you know, kind of uh, tangentially related, but if you're trying to make a career pivot, which I think, was that one of the other questions? So, so actually we've got two that tie in because another one was, how yeah. do you recommend reaching out to recruiters when you see a job you like? And then how do you market yourself on LinkedIn if you want to switch industries? So I think we're, we're we All right, so I can answer one. So. so I can answer, I can answer the pivot one in the same thing. So this is advice I've given people like a million times. And I think it's, it's, it's one of the things I love talking about. Let's say you are in the financial industry and you want to get in the healthcare industry, right? It doesn't matter if, so you're, if you're an accountant, if you're a marketing person, it doesn't really matter. Um, and, or you want to make some other career pivot, some other change, whatever it is. What I would do, I would find people in that target field that you want to get into who have that background shoot them a connection request and say, Hey, um, I'm in this other field looking to transition into your area. Saw you're very accomplished. Do you mind jumping on a zoom for 10 minutes? I just have a question for you, a few questions for you about how I might be able to make that transition. People are going to be way more likely to take that than, Hey, I'm looking for a job and I saw your company's hiring. The reason why is because, um, if that person isn't directly responsible for the hire, or if that person at that company isn't hiring right now, people get bummed out by the, are you hiring? Yeah. question. I don't know why people just are every single time, but people love hearing that one, you looked at them as an expert and you asked them for advice. And two, I think people generally do like paying it forward. So if you come from them from an angle of, um, I have some questions for you and here's, and then you send that in a connection message, I think you'll get a lot better response than you will if you just start blasting out emails. So that's also how I'd handle the pivot thing is figure out what field you want to pivot into what you need really need is to talk to people who are experts in that field and get their opinion. Cause they're the only ones who can really tell you to give you the best answer and ask them for advice and how you can make that is a great way to get in front of them because a fair amount of people will get back to you on that type of message and, and take time. Well, and not only that, but I, and I would take that one step further uh, as, as a job seeker, I'm always looking for commonalities as well. So as I, as I look for roles, 
you know, yeah, I'm going in my first connections, but I'm also going in my second connections and I'm saying, Hey, you know, how are we, how are we connected in some way, even if we've never met each other, you know, is it hobbies? Is it same teams? Is it very similar, like met very similar ideas on how we believe, um, you know, it's, uh, I always try to, uh, give, give, give them a conversation starter because it's like, Hey, I want to connect with you because you're the CEO of a company. Then everybody is like, okay, great. Like, so does 5,000 other people. Yeah. So, um, you know, I would definitely make that, uh, make that personal. Um, looking so, back to the first question about the, that's LinkedIn. Is it, is it worth that they have charged for yeah. without knowing the up charges? What does have value is if you run out of searches where you can't do anymore, that's when you need to, and if you hit a point where you need to put more time into it and you're not getting enough out of it from a search capacity, that's where it's worth the money. It's not worth the money for in-mails. So. Absolutely. Um, another, so another good one. Um, I, I like if you are checking someone's activity, will that be seen as a profile view? And if so, will you, that look like you're stalking somebody? And so I, I don't consider, I, I think everybody's profile, I mean, if you're on LinkedIn, it, it should be public anyway. And if you are looking at somebody's activity, it doesn't count as a profile view. But if you're, I, I wouldn't even call it stocking, especially if you're looking for a job. I mean, you're trying to find relative, relevant information on that person. I mean, everybody has a resume on LinkedIn, essentially. So I don't, I don't consider it stocking and it doesn't count as a profile of you. Um, but I, I want to I talk about content creation uh, and, and thought leadership because I think that's where a lot of people get caught up uh, is, you know, I am, I am too scared to post. I am, I don't know, uh, you know, I don't know what and, and, and how to post. Uh, what about my domain knowledge? So um, I think you and I have discussed a wide variety of things on LinkedIn and with each other. So I want to talk for a bit on sort of your creative process and your creative inspiration. And maybe I'll, I'll share a little bit of mine and, and, you know, how we can inspire others to, to, to do the same or even have the same creative process. Okay. So I would say there's, um, in terms of like ideas and where we come up with things, there's really kind of three areas, I, I would say one or four, we'll kind of four. So one, um, our team internally at Hirewell, we do kind of meet up and talk about like share ideas on kind of what everyone else is seeing, like what challenges people are having. Um, so if there's, you know, obviously when, when, when COVID came down, it immediately became a job seeker market. So we decided that like, we need to be t like pretty much all we're going to talk about is like how to help people like find jobs and whatnot versus like, we also in the past, I've done lots of podcasts on every topic from like, I did one on diversity inclusion. I did one on hiring salespeople. I did one on building people, your, your consulting business. So we, we like to talk about diverse area, but uh, diverse area topics, but um, just understanding kind of what's hot right now, what questions we're getting from people kind of across the organization um, and then making sure that's kind of the focus. So we do a little bit of kind of strategy on those types of things. There's, there's some of us kind of putting our heads together. You might be familiar with Jeff Smith, Ryan Brown, Emily Gore. They, they do a lot of kind of stuff on LinkedIn as well too. So that's one area. Second one, which I already mentioned, anytime I get a question, that's something I want to talk about. And because you end up getting a lot of the same questions over and over again. So um, someone asked me questions, whether it's, you know, in the comment section somewhere else, or someone kind of shoots me one over a LinkedIn messenger or whatever. That's always stuff I talk about. Um, anytime I make a comment on, well, I should say, half the comments I make are jokes anyway. So that's <laughs> why I like usually that's, most of my that's humanizing i know man. usually most of my most of most of my comments i'm just being a smart ass and, and not especially helpful but it's because i don't I, here's the thing i don't like to comment like a serious comment actually unless i actually have something to say so a lot of people the one thing that works me about linkedin is that people that is like i agree great point like i, oh, God, I don't yeah. need to say that like I, I i'll make a some sarcastic joke or unless i actually have an idea that's a different than what they're talking about then i'll post that but that also becomes something you can talk about like that, their idea, they didn't ask a question per, per se, but their idea sparked an idea out of me that I realized that's something else I can kind of elaborate on at, at some other point in time. So that's kind of the third thing. Um, I forgot what the fourth was going to be. Um, I guess it doesn't matter. But um, I, I think that the key part is, is that anytime you have an idea that just strikes, I guess that was it, like 
sometimes like I'll just have a thought that it, you know, but what you want to do is you want to make sure that you, um, you write these things down because, you know, I'm, I'm the kind of person I have like a notepad beside my bed because I'll have an idea in the middle of the night and you're going to forget it. But it happens like all, all throughout the day. Like you might have some sort of idea for something that you might want to kind of articulate and relay. And if you don't write them down somewhere, you're going to forget them. So, you know, a lot of times, like if I feel like I need to post something on LinkedIn, I'll just like look through my notepad of stuff that I kind of thought up before and just see what's there. So, so you, you and I have a very different sort of creative process. On, All right. What do you got? That. Let's hear it. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to say it. And then we actually got another question that is actually going to be relevant for you. Um, so, so for me, uh, it's very funny because there's actually somebody on, on this, this webinar who's sort of asked me like how, how I go about this. And a lot of times, I don't know what I'm going to write until about 20 minutes before, um, even even 10 minutes before. And you know, you know, for me, and I think sometimes that can uh, lend itself to either writer's block or maybe something that might not come out as coherently as I want to. Uh, but for me, it's you know what what is what is relevant, and what is going to get people talking, and what am I passionate about. And how am I, how am I feeling that day? Because some posts, some posts of mine are very, are much more serious than others. Um, you know, just because it's like, Hey, I I've seen something happen a lot on LinkedIn the day before. And I think it needs to be stated from my perspective. Um, so, so that, that's kind of, that's kind of how I, I go about it's very, it's not willy nilly, but it's more stream of consciousness. And yep. I think that's how I've sort of built my personal brand because you know, when I write it, that it's not, it's, it's not like sort of built or it's, it's not sort of controlled. It's, Hey, this is what, this is what I truly believe and I'm willing to talk about it. Yep. Um, you know, I, I, I think, but I, I think there is a, I think there is a point where you can take it too far. Uh, but I also think for me, when I talk about it, it's, you know, how, how do we create, how do I, my goal when I write is how do I create conversation? Because that's really what my goal is, is on, on LinkedIn. How do we spark new ideas? How do we create conversation? And how do we help people find new perspectives? And now I have two questions for you. Number one, um, how do you differentiate between personal language and your company's language on your posts and content? See, I actually think that there needs to be less differentiation. Um, like I, I try to write more and more like myself. Like I think if I were going back, I started getting more involved on LinkedIn a year ago and, um, I've been progressively trying to be less formal in my writing but I think that's the biggest issue with people from their corporate um, corporate brands is that they're all still too formal and stuffy. So um, I, I think that corporate brands should sound more like you. Um, maybe save like, you know, things that are directly personal, you know what I mean? Like sarcastic jokes or talking about your Cowboys jersey, you know what I mean? But I, I think that one mistake that corporate brands make is that they're in, in employment branding is that they need to sound more like a person writes it versus a robot. Yeah. And um, I think there's so to answer the question, I just think there should be less differentiation than there is. And the only real differentiation is things that are directly related to just you. You know what I mean? So, you know, my higher wall shouldn't be commenting as the number one or three ranked sarcastic commenter in, <laughs> in the world. Um, that's a me thing. But aside from that, like, I think that, um, I think every, I think all writing, I, I think people are just burned out on corporate speak. And I think um, it just needs to go more of a write like you talk approach. Yeah, pe pe people, I mean, people want to have a conversation. Uh, and I think it relates to another question, which is uh, how often, so somebody asked, how often should one post? And when you have multiple ideas, which both of us have, do you slowly start out posting or do you plan to post them two times a week when starting out? Uh, so curious about your perspective and then uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go with mine. Um, I try to, I mean, I post, I'll do something once every day. Um, I mean, there, I just, the algorithm, people who post too much, they, the post ends up eating each other. So there's no point. Um, no one, you're not gonna get the full effect. I think even some people might post twice a day. I think that I try to have a rough plan of, I'm going to try to post one thing every day. 
all my all my real fans know that Saturday is troll day. Every single thing I post <laughs> on Saturday is always a joke. Um, all your real fans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but, but the rest of the week is stuff that's like usually related to what we're doing. Um, I have a tr- I have a lot of video posts that I haven't even used yet. Um, just because I'm always taking video of the conversations I have every day, which I can easily kind of turn into things. So um, I. I I would say I do have a little bit of a stream of consciousness, things like you do. If there's anything that's really pressing me and like I wake up one morning and like, oh, that's something I got to talk about. I'll do that. Otherwise, I usually default. So like I, I probably have 10 different talking points I'd want to hit on any given certain day. So just kind of pick one and just go with it. Um, See, I think and I think if you're starting out, I mean, do do with what you feel is comfortable. Um, I, you know, if you have multiple ideas, yeah, definitely spread them out and make sure when you're posting those ideas, uh, like sometimes my focus is it, it when I post it, it's less on the post and more about the conversation because the conversation is really what drives the algorithm and the, you know, the, the engagement. I mean, if, if your comment, go ahead. I was gonna say, I have something really uh, that I forgot about this one. Cause I'm thinking of someone who's starting out. The biggest lesson I learned when I was starting out is I was always trying to make everything way too detailed and involved. Like I thought of a post as like, um, a blog post where I need to have like five separate bullet points backing up what I'm talking about. That's actually five different posts you should be doing on LinkedIn, like yeah. make everything micro. So if you have like, if there is a larger concept you have in your head and you have like four or five things you want to say about it, write all down. So you have it, but each one of those things is its own post for a day. Don't overcomplicate it by like trying to say or do too much. Oh, and then, so that goes into another question is our posts better than articles. And I, I tend to think posts are better, but. Oh yeah. I mean, if, if any research you do and LinkedIn hates their own article section nowadays. So there's nothing wrong with writing an article. If something you have like a lot to say, but even just by the engagement numbers, they give no love to their, their, their posts or their, I'm sorry, their, uh, their long form uh, like blogs or whatever they're called. Yeah. Nowadays. So like, I don't, I think years ago they were really trying to push that because they were trying to be like a blogging platform. Yeah, they're trying but, to be medium. Yeah. Yeah. But the problem is like no one reads blogs anymore. So they realized that one, they got beat by medium, but two, like, it's just also something that's kind of on the wane, like blogs are less and less popular every, like people just don't really read long form content. That's what Twitter taught us. Um, so post, I, I would always, if, if you have, the, if, if you have the exact same idea and you post it as a, as a post versus an article, you'll get like 10 X the 10 X the engagement. Well, and it's all about text too. I think a lot of people they'll throw in, they'll throw links in and it it totally ruins it. Uh, But I mean, it's literally just think of it as a, as a basic just type and post. Yeah. Well, LinkedIn also hates any sort of URL that goes off their site. So if you have something great to say and you, you decided to put in like an offsite URL because you were going to show people something, it will get a fraction of like the engagement it should have gotten. That's why if you pay attention, I do this all the time, but a lot of people always put like the links to this Zoom webinar, I put it in the comments section of yeah. the post I made to promote it. Had I put it in the post itself, no one would have seen it. But I, I think to tie everything back, you know, it's, it's all about, especially when you're trying to build a personal brand, uh, it's about posting what you feel, you know, what you feel is necessary because yeah, there might be some that are like, eh, it's not relevant, but there are definitely those that are. And, you know, if you, if you feel it's necessary, post with what you want, post, post what you think, and slowly but surely, you'll build your own engagement. You'll have your own conversations with people who like your stuff. And, you know, slowly but surely, hiring managers, recruiters will know, will know what you're about. And, you know, that, that's really all it is, is just getting, it's just getting yourself out there because people will know what you, you know, people will understand this is what you know. And it just becomes a lot easier conversation when you're trying to build your career. I agree. Um, I was, uh, first off, we, this is the longest uh, podcast LinkedIn Live I've ever done. So congrats to you. Um, <laughs> set a record here. Um, do we have any other questions? Uh, we okay. have, the one was, uh, do, do you have, does it, do you have your own? Uh, oh, so we've got two. Um, one is, do you have your own personal board of directors? And two is do recruiters really looked at LinkedIn activity or just the headline? Um, so personal look, board of directors. I think, pers- I think, I think that they more meant, you know, are there people who you show your post around bef- before you, 
before you post or, you know, are there people who are like your personal cheerleaders or helping you out? I, I think in terms of like a mentorship and, and, and that sort of thing. And then um, LinkedIn not progress. for most part. No, there's a few topics that are, there's one or two topics, which I didn't really get around to because COVID happened and it's something seemed less relevant that are some things that are very core to our business. Um, there's a few people internally I might bounce ideas off of, but the overwhelming majority, um, I don't run it past. There are people I'll talk to. Um, I'd say you're one of them. Um, I talk to Nate Guja a lot. Um, there, there's, there's probably a handful of people that um, I might bounce an idea off them to see if it's even interesting or kind of what their take is or if, I, if I'm missing something. Yeah. But by and large, I don't have anybody proofreading my stuff. You know, I th or, so for, for me, um, like certain topics, I think around like diversity, equity, and inclusion, if I'm saying something that may be construed as controversial or something like that, uh, there are a few people who I will say, hey, I'm writing this post. Can you make sure it's accurate and, you know, any terms that I'm using? Uh, because obviously, you know, I want to say what I say, but I also want to be truthful in, in, in what I say. Um, so I think, I think with that, um, I definitely have a, a personal board, but with anything else, it's more, uh, you know, I, I don't really care. And then the yeah. other one is do recruiters link, look at LinkedIn activity or just the headline? And I mean, I would say, I would say yes, because, you know, as a, as a recruiter, I'm trying to get the whole picture of, of a candidate because, yeah, I might see the headline of somebody, but if I dig in and they're, they're, cause people have been called out for saying, you know, racist or chauvinist stuff. And why do I really want to have that person on the team? Why do I want to engage that person? If that's, you know, if, if that's, that's what they believe, um, that could be toxic to my organization. So I'll let you go. Yeah, I would say, I mean, it's, it's a different part, a different part in the funnel usually. So um, we actually talk about this. This is another topic, which I don't want to go too deep on, but um, your, your LinkedIn profile marketers will get this, but um, it's, it's the same. It's search engine optimization. It's SEO. So um, your profile is a website and um, LinkedIn recruiter, which the recruiters use is Google. So they are using keyword based um, searches in order to find whatever pops up. And the goal is for your profile to pop up in the first page of Google, basically. Yep. But in this reality, it's you want your profile of someone searching on your skill set to show up in the first page of the LinkedIn results. Um, or for several pages, they never find anybody they need. They don't find everybody they need in the first page. But um, so keywords and the headline, everything else are very or more important from like top of the funnel. So in order to be found, um, that's it's inherently more important there. But yeah, as they get deeper into the vetting process, so finding people, step one, then vetting people further down. Um, yeah, if you're, if you're saying crazy things on LinkedIn, it's going to get found out, you know, and so there is um, anywhere else in the internet. So, um, but LinkedIn, act, if, if this was more about LinkedIn activity in terms of like, um, I don't, if we're tying this back to personal brand, I'll say this. Your, your personal brand targets of whose radar you want to get on isn't, isn't really recruiters, it's the hiring managers. Right. So um, recruiters, if, if you're sharing your knowledge as an expert in your field, as part of LinkedIn posting, that's not so much a play for um, getting you on recruiters radar, that's a play for getting you on hiring managers radar. So it's important, um, but if that makes sense, I don't know. No, I, I think, I think it definitely does because yeah, I, I mean, it's the, the recruiters are the first funnel, but the hiring managers are the one that ultimately make the decision. So, yeah. but yeah, obviously if, if I'm a good recruiter or a good hiring manager, like, yeah, I'm going to dig into that person's profile and figure out, Hey, like, what are, what are they saying? Um, because I, I think there was somebody who was called out this morning, um, this like scrum master for a big company uh, because they had commented on something about Michelle Obama and they use racist terminology. And it's like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> like, no, come on. Don't do yeah. it. Don't yeah. even do politics. <laughs> don't even, don't even get to stay. If there's one thing you just don't discuss under any, obviously nothing racist like that, but don't just don't get into politics. Just completely avoid I, yeah, just don't, I see people do that and I cringe every single time, which there was a question I got over email uh, before this started. Um, 
How can thought leadership transfer? I think we talked about some of these. Are there times where humor can backfire when you're trying to brand yourself with a humorous touch? 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, not for me, but for... <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, for me, um, but yeah, um, <laughs> no, but yeah, I mean, there's there there's always a fine line. You just have to know what is um, acceptable universal humor versus yeah. things that are a little too niche, you know. So, um, you know, it has to be a, a toned down version of um, you know stuff that's going to fly on Twitter or the deeper corners of Reddit is not the kind of humor you want to use on LinkedIn, you know. Um, I think it has to be more every day. Like I, I think sarcasm still plays well, assuming people get that you're joking. Yeah. But um, I think I, that you just want to avoid anything that can be construed as racier or anything else or you, more you, taboo. You know, I find, uh, I, I think the, the, the word we can use is uh, Seinfeldian. Uh, I, I think that if you stick to that type of humor or just yeah. like general, general sarcasm, it's gonna not offend anybody. And, you know, it, it definitely produces, produces a couple, a couple of laughs and it's not, it's not, it's not scandalous enough where it could be cause for, uh, if it, it's anger. Mostly, yeah. If you're not sure, don't post it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> it, yeah. That, that's the common sense we refer to. Yes. Um, was any other questions or did we pretty much, uh, we pretty much hit them all. I think we've answered every question. All right. So um, I want to, cause you were mentioning like you try to think of stuff that's like thought provoking or engagement. I had, cause I, I didn't want to cut you off when you were saying that the, where I differ a little bit is I'm always like, okay, what's like a tactical takeaway I can give people, which I think we've had a lot kind of throughout this, but usually when I'm like posting something, I'm like, okay, what can someone actually take and take action out of? Um, so I guess doing our quick tactical takeaways to, to end this whole thing. Um, <laughs> first, so humanizing yourself, I would say, so me for, for the quick thing for humanizing ourselves, um, start with the headline, biggest mistake most people make. And I was making this as of two weeks ago before Adam, Adam kind of called me out on this is that it should not just be your company and your title. Like it should be, what is you actually do and something personal, you know, like it's your, your company and title that's further down your experience level. Anyway, you can still have it in there, but make sure you also have something very personal. It can be funny. It doesn't have to be funny. It can be something more descriptive, but so it all starts with your headline because that's the thing that everyone sees every time you comment is what's in your headline. Fair. Yeah. yeah I mean, I think a hundred percent that's the, yeah. I, I, like take a second for yourself. Think about what, what makes you, you. I mean, it is, it's something, you know, we learn in preschool, like what, what, you know, it's, the, like, it's like the Barney song, like you are special, like tell us how you are special. Second tactical takeaway is on the second topic, building and engaging with like your target network. Um, so once again, people who are hiring managers at target companies or executives at target companies you're looking to, to work with, this is back to job seeking people who are um, at those companies at the same level you're on, especially if they're active on LinkedIn or just industry thought leaders in general, you want to follow these people, you want to engage with them as much as you can in terms of commenting on their post. Um, I would take down their URLs and just, you know, once or twice a day, kind of just going through them all, see if they post anything, because not everything's going to show up in your feed. Um, and once you start having um, regularly commenting with those kinds of people, you're going to show up in their feeds more often. Mm -hmm. um, that may be enough. You can start connecting with them. You'll start having more, you start building more relationships that way. Got it. And then lastly, we had a bunch of ideas on content creation. Again, I think it comes down to somebody asks you a question, whatever your answer is, that's something people are going to hear about. Write those things down so you don't forget. Yeah, I, th I think, I think this, is all, this is all great takeaways. I mean, remember, your personal, your personal brand is personal. Yeah. All right, I'm going to wrap this up. It's been, did we crack an hour? Oh, yeah, we did. Well, we, we cracked an hour. So I, th th thank you to the 16 people on Zoom and I don't know how many on LinkedIn Live for, for, for staying with us. So yeah. um, somebody said I just ruined it with Barney. So uh, <laughs> I, I mean, listen, sometimes you got to, you got to, like, this, sometimes this stuff is so simple that you got to, you got to take it to the basics. And yep. I think that's what, that's what it is. So. All right. We're going to let everyone, we had people already say they had a bill because they had another meeting, which we, we went over our time here. So, all right, everyone, <laughs> thanks for uh, listening to Hire Wells Recruiting Insights podcast. If you like what you heard and want more insights from our recruiting experts, 
visit hirewall.com slash recruiting dash insights. And remember to subscribe to the podcast on Apple podcast, Google podcast, Spotify, Spotify, or YouTube. Um, someone did ask if this will be available for replay later. Yes. YouTube will have the entire thing in a few days, maybe a week. So it'll be there. Um, Adam, thanks for coming. It's a good conversation as always. Yeah. Uh, I, I appreciate this, James. Yep. Everyone stay safe. See you guys soon.